Tell them who you are, Bob. Hey, right, folks. I'm Wild Bob. This is the Wild Bob and Ronnie Show coming to you from La Follette, Tennessee, U.S. of A. We are pleased to be with you, and we, uh, I hope all four of you that's watching are pleased to be here. <laughs> this is R.L. Henson. Right. We've got our resident, the, Peru, the sage of old Jacksboro Pike. Right, so it's our... Uh, Sage. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to look at another. This is our resident guru. Gr There's another one. <laughs> Fellas, y'all are not using big long words on right, me that I have, to, I have to look up and find well, out what's what going on. Do, do we need to uh, put some accolades on this pioneer over in the uh, uh, Cherokee National Forest? Well, I'd, I'd sure like to discuss that fellow a little bit. Uh, heard Don't about you look at this right here. Sage is a person of profound wisdom. Uh-oh. Well, I thought it was that stuff that I grind up and put in my sausage. Well, take it however you want I to. I thought that was something you put in sausage. I've heard that somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes pretty good, don't it? Yeah, when you it fix does. in there, buddy. It really puts the wing to it. Now, this fella that they have, this desperado that they've desperado. apprehended. I feel a lot safer since they got him in jail. Oh, yeah. I sure do. Uh, yeah, well, since they got Martha Stewart back out, we need all the internees we can get. Well, I read the article, and there's some discussion on it also uh, on the uh, talk show, local, out of Knoxville, uh, field show. And when I read it this morning... No, I, I don't listen to Phil anymore. Well, I kind of got ticked off him. When I'm a driving, sometimes <clears throat> there's another station over our another news talk station is pretty good. Ninety-four point three. Yeah, but they get on. I think they've got some kind of a sports program in yeah. the afternoon, and I, my opinion of have, where you can sit and talk three hours about a game that don't last but an hour, I, well, I, or maybe yeah, a day or two. Yeah, I'm most used uh, to saying it. And Phil is a very multi-talented person. He does voices great. He's got a pretty wide knowledge. But I got ticked off something he he done one time and I just ain't over it yet. Ah, given time. You know, everything heals after a while. But this this fella, I believe his name is Sharky. I'm sure they've run his background and whatever, and they've undoubtedly not found anything in his background that they can charge him with as a felon or anything like that. I'm sure that's the first thing they did. And from what I've read in this article, and I'm sure there's going to be more come out about this, uh, he, he's, he seems smart enough that he hadn't fo didn't fall for some of the tricks that's in the judicial system. Uh, he pled, whenever they charged him, he pled guilty for everything they charged him with. And I don't think they, I think they wish they had charged him for a lot less now. Uh, in my opinion, the the judge most likely would have been perfectly happy to turn him loose on his own recognizance because he's not da a danger to society, it don't seem to me like. He's about as uh, harmless as a couple of little goats. Well, you know, whenever... That's another thing. Bob's back on the streets, you know. Is he? Yeah, yeah he's back out. Did, did, whenever they can you up like that, do they take your goats with you, Bob? Do you get to take them with you? Do, do they incarcerate your goats too? Cockroaches. Incarcerate them. Well, do yeah, they put them in jail? I'm afraid, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that they're going to discover some of them out on my property. <laughs> okay. But this fella, from what I've read, he he's not harming <coughs> anyone. And if I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of acres there is in the Cherokee well, National Forest. You can't have everybody going in there building cabins. It'll be full of homeless people. And they won't be homeless no more. Oh, yeah. and then we've really got a problem. I mean, I, who who is going to vote for Obama if all them people go out there and build them a shack and they're not homeless anymore? I know we can't yeah. have that. And what also, you know, me and Bo Ronnie, <coughs> we've discussed this matter and tried to figure out who the government has least control over. Hmm. And this gentleman right here. The government, the only way they can control him is due to the fact of where he was standing at on this great earth. 
and he's standing or living on what they call their property, which it's not really their property. It don't belong per se to the government because the government belongs to the people. And he's a person. No, the people belong to the government. You got well, backers, that, that's well, how it is. But it, years. That's how it is, but not how it's supposed to be. And if you go back, this fella could use the Constitution, the very simplest part of it, as a defense. That's life, liberty. Well, wait a minute. That's not yeah, in the Constitution, is guilty, it? Why do you need a defense? That's correct. You you don't need a defense. But he's only guilty of the laws that we've written, of course, and we've written plenty of them, and there's reasons for them, but the other side of this thing is, this guy, uh, according to what I've read, he had his garden, he is building him a shelter, and he has a water supply. Well, he ought to be there somewhere where we can keep him up. That's the point, right there. If He's, he had signed up for food stamp, he probably would have, uh, nobody would have paid any attention to him. If he had been on every kind of dole that you could think of, he would have been a fine, perfect person. But going out there <coughs> on his own, <coughs> and I heard that he cleared an acre of land, uh, and ha like I say, I'm going back to the, he's got a water supply, and he's got a, a garden, and he's building him a shelter. But the thing of it is, he don't have no mail delivery. He don't have... Uh, you name it, everything on the sun. He's not. Let me put it this way: He's not costing the working taxpayer out here anything other than one acre of ground. Which that ground, when he's gone, that piece of ground will still be there. Now I'd say they stole that from some poor devil anyway. Well, the government probably did, but that's my two cents on the thing. In my opinion: They ought to leave the guy alone if he's back there minding his own business. And he's not a threat to society, which, in my opinion, they've run him seven ways to Sunday to find out if he's got anything outstanding. So, I kind of... Well, the reason they don't want to put him in jail is he ain't got nothing they can take away from him. Well, I've got a lot of respect for anyone who can survive out there in the elements and that it can survive. Uh, that, there's an awful lot of people that can't. They're... There's millions of them that if you set them down out there, just take them out there and set them down, they'd starve to death right uh, there. Now, does he care whether or not there's a traffic jam on I-40 uh, and they can't, the trucks or trucks can't get through? No, it didn't bother him. But the people in Chicago and New York, 10 days if they, somebody shut the highways off, uh, they'd be rioting and starving to death. Well, if, if you just... Uh, <coughs> If you just block one or two lanes of a bridge over, I believe they'll have a federal lawsuit against you, don't they? Uh, if you block two lanes of a bridge up there, they can have a federal lawsuit against you. That's true. But the guy, I'll bet, being that far back, he's not taking stress pills. And I don't know whether he's got him a, another garden back or not, but if he has, that'd be his own business. If he's raising some stress relief <laughs> uh, it's hard to say it's hard to say but anyhow that's that's my two cents and if they well, i'm sure the government will eat him, eat him up they'll know, i really don't feel that the government should own anything other than the white house congressional building and the supreme court now i feel like all the mail uh have, Post offices and everything ought to be leased from private industry. I think all of your national parks need to be just opened up for development, uh, for people to live in. Uh, I don't believe in, uh, like my daddy always says, boy, don't cut no, none of those dogwood you need to sell. You know, and uh, I, I never could figure out why, and the older I got, and uh, the need for something that he saw in the early 1900s was gone and would never come back. Uh, the only thing I know the dog was the good boys, the little berries to feed the ground squirrels, the birds, and that sort They're of thing. good in pop guns. Mm -hmm. uh, Them birds are good in pop guns. Yeah, they are, yeah. Where's your mic? My mic. I don't know. Down there. Don't know about what I got to say.
Stay in here. I know that's right. But... Hey, both. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But I need a mic. Why don't they call them mic? Why don't they call them Gims or, or Bills or Harry? Yeah. As long as they don't call them Bob. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to call them a Johnson. Do you, do you remember when they used to call them things in your ears? Ear bobs? Because they bobbed around? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was reading an article here, I've uh, been two or three months ago, or maybe longer. And I believe it's in California. There was a fella, and I'm not sure he was living off the grid or whatever, but anyhow, he had uh, taken an animal, some kind of a wild animal, he'd killed it and prepared it, and it may have been a bird or something, I don't know. <clears throat> but anyhow, he consumed it. You mean he ate it? Yeah, he ate the booger. Yeah, he cut, cut the booger and up. it didn't come out of a can? Well, it wasn't... It wasn't genetically altered or nothing. He just it's just a wild animal. But anyhow, they took him to court and I don't know what kind of legal background the guy had, but he definitely put up one heck of a defense in the fact that a person is allowed to eat. You're allowed to Well they got a right to free water in Detroit. Well now I think people have got a right to free water. I do. Go dip it out of the creek. That's correct. They ought to set them up a, something and catch it when it rains. They ought to get it. The, the water should be free. But I can see where that the upkeep of sterilizing it and transporting it and pumping it and all that stuff, I can see where you could be charged for that. But as far as the water itself, if you set you up a, a container and you catch water, it ought to be free, in my opinion. Well, I do that. Well, I uh, mean, I may not want nobody to know it, you know, but I do well, that. That's that's what I'm saying. When we lived back in the holler, our water was free, but we did have to carry it. But it was still the water was free. You just dip your pail in, and well, one thing that really kind of concerned me as we left the uh, uh, 20th century and went into the 21st century. But I never thought when I was a young man that I would be buying water and selling rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand. I'm, I'm serious, you know. I, said, I couldn't see why in the world anybody would want to buy rocks. Or why mm. in the world a person would need to buy water. People you pay know. more for water than they do gas and they bitch about gas prices all the time. Right, I know that. Uh, you know, uh, you go, I uh, went to the flea market this weekend, they're charging a dollar a bottle for water. Now that's uh, $24 for uh, uh, 24 uh, 16 ounce bottles. Now that's uh, somewhere around better than $20 a gallon for water. Well, there's a hundred, is it 162 ounces in a gallon? I can't remember, 164 ounces. I can't remember now. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. I ought to remember that. Okay. Uh, chemicals are measured in, in ounces. You got 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. 128. 8, uh, a cup is 8, a quart is uh, 16. No, a quart, um, what do you call a? What? A pint is 16, yeah. a quart is 32. 32, a gallon yeah. is 60, Six, 120, 20, 128. 128. Where did I get 64? 128. Yeah, that's, that's a half a gallon, 64, yeah. and a gallon is 128. Uh -huh. a, a quart is 16 ounces, right? 32. A 32 ounces, right, yeah. A pint is 16 ounces, mm -hmm. yeah. And we I had this conversation, Ben. Quart, quart 32, half gallon is 64, and uh, so that makes a gallon 92. 128. Well, you know, do you, do you know modern math? Uh, you evidently take, you do. If you take 5 minus 2, that you can come up with 4. 5 minus 2, you got to add 5, and then to get back to 2, you got to... Subtract uh, eight and divide it by two and add three. Five, five minus two is three. 
No, five no you got to add four. five to the five to get ten, yeah. and then you subtract uh, enough to get back to three, which is seven, and that's you odd, so you got to make it even and add one, then hey, you got to divide by two and then cut you it. Make, you three. make it complicated. What is the Roman numeral for four? IV. All right, you take away two, F and E, you got four. Take away two from five, you yeah. got four. That's right. Take the F and E away, you got IV left. What's the Roman numeral representation for zero? Zero. I don't believe there was. I don't believe they had a zero back then, did they? C. There ain't no, no, it's a hundred. Hundred C. A C bill. C. Divide that C by a hundred and what you got. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I, I read that somewhere where that they asked what was the most significant digit ever was. Zero. It was the zero. Yes. Because without the zero, you can only count to nine or you can only go backwards to one. You can't. Well, if you don't start off with one, you can't go nowhere. <laughs> Anyhow. Boy, this, this math lesson ain't worth a hoot for nothing. A mathematician yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm kind of like Einstein. He flunked out of, of uh, what, uh, junior high? He may have. He, yeah. Uh, Einstein was lucky from what I've found out and whatever to get to have gotten out, gotten out from under the Hitler situation. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he would have been for his knowledge or whatever, and then right. after they got done with him, I'd say he'd uh, well, now, on not end that so good. Side, you know, we come into a lot of new things with the advent of uh, abortions and the advent of uh, uh, different types of medicine and the advent of cloning or, or mapping mm -hmm. the human gene yep. geno genome, whatever you call it, and uh, the, the ability to clone sheep. I don't know whether Dolly's still alive or not. Is a sheep still alive? Well, I think it's one of the most frightful situations. I don't know. One of the most frightful situations in the world. Why well, they could actually clone Bob. And then what oh. would we do? Right. Well, you know, you know what they did. This fella, he, he cloned himself. This professor. Did you hear about that? And uh, uh, it was against the law for him to do it. So he kept his clone at home. Uh huh. And the only people that ever got to see him were some of his real close friends. And what they did, they, they did a lot like we did with this old German boy that come over to uh, Greensboro to work on uh, these uh, Surratt machines that uh, P. Lord Lord Corporation brought in from Germany. We taught him all the dirty words and all the slang words. You know, he couldn't say a, a sentence without using some expletive <laughs> deletive. Well, that's the way it was with this professor's clone uh, that he kept at home. He's just a foul-talking, nasty-talking individual, so he never would take him out anywhere. Well, with the Halloween season coming up now, uh, this was Halloween for them back uh, several years ago, and they talked the professor into taking his clone to a masquerade party. And mm -hmm. uh, they, they were for several days there, he talked to the clone about being sure that he kept a civil tongue in his mouth. And uh, so the night for the party is up somewhere in the 23rd, 24th story of the of the, this high rise in New York. He carried the clone up there and everybody was just amazed that there were two identical people because they all needed a professor. Well, it wasn't long before this clone had all the women over there in the corner just uh, uh, embarrassing them, you know, and saying all kind of dirty things to them. So the professor went over there and he grabbed the clone by the back of his neck and took him outside on the balcony to talk to him. Well, the clone kept giving him a bunch of sash back and the professor hauled off and socked him, knocked him plumb over the banisters down on the 23rd floor. Fell all the way smack down on the pavement. Well, they called the police naturally and there was this guy was dead on the sidewalk, but yet there he was talking to the police. Well, uh, the uh, uh, street police didn't know what to make of it, so they called the sergeant in. The sergeant come out. Sergeant called the captain. Captain called the chief. They they called the uh, 
prosecutor and everybody else didn't know what the charge is professor with. <laughs> so finally, the charge that they come up with that would hold true, they charged him with making an obscene clone fall. <laughs> is that against the law to make an obscene clone fall? <laughs> Is that anything uh, like whenever in, uh, this is an obscene clone? Is that ball. anything like them our uh, 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 them our uh, porpoises that live forever? And porpoises, porpoises. And porpoises that live forever. Now what about it? Archie Campbell said they were some porpoises that live forever, and there was this family that their their obligation to these porpoises was to bring them gulls. They, these porpoises ate seagulls, and that's what kept them alive, and they lived forever. And this one guy was a taking, it was his job to take them some, some seagulls, and he was delivering the seagulls one day, and he was walking up the sidewalk, and right there on the sidewalk was a line laying there across the sidewalk, and this guy didn't know what to do because he had to take these gulls in there, them porpoises. So he finally just, he just, he just stepped over the line, and the line just stayed there. He didn't get in the house before the FBI come grab him. Crossing, they got him for crossing state lines for to deliver girls for immortal purposes. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to do. Why do you remember that? Crossing state lines. Give me a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> what we need, what we need to live this show up is a Miss Goodbody. No, oh, I got, good yeah, 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 you know, it's like, all we're doing all day is just putt and carry bomb, putt and carry bomb. I got one for you here. This is an inter internet, this is a YouTube right, clip okay. of some Chicago black activists, and I'm not going to put the video on, I don't know how the copyright laws are, but I'm going to let the audio play, and you guys can uh, see what you think about when they get done talking here. We probably won't go through the whole thing, but here goes. Black leadership relationship. We have to send a message. This, this is the time for us to send a message. We're always talking about what the Republicans ain't done for us or what they will do to hurt us. My life has been hurt by Democrats. And we got in our mind that we always got to keep vote Democrat. You know, look at the see in your community. Who are the real oppressors in our community? They always talk about black on black crime. And when you hear the word black on black crime, the first thing you think of is a black man robbing you, a black man breaking in your house. And that is a black on black crime. But let's take it one step further. There's a black on black crime in down in City Hall. There's a black on black crime down in, the, in, in all the state capitals in America where black folks are voting against our interests, where black folks are voting and making us, we're getting poor and poor, and other groups are getting richer and richer. Everywhere you go, there's poverty in black areas. This is not where I stand at right now. Ida B. Wells, public housing residents you live at. Most of the people are homeless living in the street. And it's because of you, Mr. President. In Detroit, where your leaders at? There's no white folks running Detroit cutting water on black folks in Detroit. Them black folks running that city. There ain't no white folks doing that. Them black folks going along with that. Everything's happening in our community is black leadership doing this. Our children know that if the Democrats have not done anything for us as of yet, why should they even go out and vote? What agenda's on the table is gonna change their life? The only thing they're offering the black community is abortion on demand. This is what the president asking for us to vote for. Now he wants to have this conversation about minimum wage raise because he knows that this is the way to get a lot of the poor people's attention. But the hell with his minimum wage uh, 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 raise. We don't have any jobs. What do you think about that, Taylor? Uh, what do you think about that? There's a lot of truth in it. I think that Obama is, he can do a lot of damage in the next two years. But his presidency is, as far as actually doing it lawfully, he's done. When Saturday Night Live turns on you, you're done. <laughs> That's true. Good, good point. The uh, I actually uh, I I I heard there's a 
a very liberal NPR show comes on uh, a nice public radio every wait wait Wait, wait, don't tell me is what it's called. It's a quiz show. Oh, yeah, I've comes heard that. It on, comes on yeah. middays on Saturday here. Yeah. And they are very, very uh, liberal. We're helping to pay for their bills, but they they have managed to blame stuff on George Bush for six years. But Saturday, they actually start doing jokes about Obama's failed leadership. That old boy sunk. But he can still so. do a lot of damage, like turning 34 million illegals well, into the country. He's done a lot of damage. He's got room to do a lot more. All right. I believe that he's already said <clears throat> after this election that he's going to do that. Yeah. I believe he's already stated that it will be done. And I also, I picked up, and I didn't get this direct, that the, uh, hmm. what we would call a procurement officer yeah. the procurement department is putting out bids for i think it's five million or ten million 34 wasn't it was it 34 I million so. uh paperwork to make people indirectly citizens the first step toward becoming citizens right. or whatever uh well you know i've said before now i hate to be redundant and keep repeating it Obama cannot make people poor enough fast enough or they will vote Democrat for the Democrats so he's having to bring them in. Yeah. I, I said that starting off kind of, kind of as a joke, but the more I've said it, uh, I think the more true it has become. Not because I said it, but that's just the way things are happening. Well, I've I haven't been listening to a whole lot of news here in the last week or so. I've been tied up with other things. You don't mean you're actually trying to make a living or something? Yeah. Do you? Oh my goodness. That's a, that's a shame, I, isn't it? You, you know, I come out of a mixer drum Sunday night about seven thirty, eight o'clock. I'd work in it all day long Sunday, putting fins in a oh. drum. And while I'm in there cutting and welding, I keep asking myself, where are my leaders at today? You know, it's a beautiful <laughs> day. And I'm inside of a concrete mixer drum welding in fins in there. And Well, you didn't build that. <coughs> no, I didn't build that. And, it, you know, I carry a little book that I've got all these choice words in that I use, like if I mash my finger right. or whatever. And I had to take my book out three times while I was in there because it got hot about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It really got hot in there with that torch and that welder. I can imagine. And I, had, I picked me out a few words to uh, describe my leaders. And, you know, I come to the conclusion a long, long time ago, I'm not going to follow somebody unless they know more than I do. What's the point of following somebody that ain't got the stuff or whatever? They don't know where they're going. Well, that's right. Why do you follow people like that? Well, it's, uh, it's about like down at Jonestown. Well, there's, that's a good example. And, uh, they, you know... Uh, uh, it's just about that crazy people who follow Obama. Well, uh, what what does he actually know? I mean, if you if you set him down <coughs> out here, to me, if you don't know the basics, and I'm talking about from the some of the ground up stuff, I don't see as how you should lead people. I he think he does not have the fundamental basic knowledge. That you or I or anybody in our generation or your generation has. Well, uh, I just like to say I'm lost. I sometimes think this country is like a boat, and it's out there in the in the ocean, and it's loaded down with people. This boat is, and you got a percentage of the people. This boat's a leak in water. It's taking on water. And you got a percentage of the people that are rowing, and so many are bailing water. And then you got untold numbers of them that are sitting there in the boat. They're eating, playing cards, and trying to figure out how to jip each other or something. And a lot of these people in this boat, every politician that's in this country is in this boat. And there's not very many of them who are bailing water or rowing or doing anything. They're sitting in this boat. 
and this boat's a sinking. Somewhere along the line, if this boat's going to survive, we're going to have to toss a few people overboard. And that's the, you're not going to toss the ones overboard that's bailing water and paddling. Yeah, yeah you will. It wouldn't be politically that. correct. Well, it wouldn't be compassionate. Compassion is fine. I got nothing wrong with compassion. If there's people on this boat that cannot bail water, that have already bailed water to their war out, I think they should ride. But them that ain't done nothing but steal off the others, and I'm talking about whether they steal it with a gun or a pen or whatever else, and they refuse to bail water or paddle either one, I think it's time that we got to make some decisions. And one of the decisions I would definitely be against is bringing about so many million, 36 million, 64 million more on this boat. Well, look, they're always uh, pushing for more money for education. Education. Why would they bring people in that don't know how to read and write, that, you know, they have no basic knowledge of anything? Well, in they our society... Think, they don't even know what toilet paper or toothbrush is. Well, they don't speak English. I mean, how do you communicate if you're on this ship and you're telling somebody that they need to bail water and they don't understand what you're saying, they're there. Well, everybody, they have to eat and drink and whatever and so forth and like you say, use the toilet paper or whatever. But if you'll take the number, just the pure numbers of people, and I'm not talking about good, bad, indifferent. It's just a uh, kind of like a mathematical fact that once you get to the point that you don't have enough people bailing water or rowing the boat, the boat's going to sink. And I think we're already to the point right now, if you'll check our, how much, what is it called, the draft that your boats are pulling, you put $17 trillion, or almost $18 trillion. How about a hundred million, a trillion. trillion. Well, for the ones that we got to pay out, that's right. But we're already... If we, and I don't know how you'd figure this up, but I'm sure there's somebody knows it, but even with our underground natural resources and everything else valued at market value, there's a good possibility that the United States of America is not worth $17 trillion if you add it all up. But well, yeah, let's say yeah. that it is. What is that? That's okay. about a week's work at the printing factory. Well, let's say... Big let, bills. Okay, let's say that it is. But here's the thing. That $17 trillion is owned by other entities. So well, if it well, is... Let's no, say, everything belongs to the about. government. What's the well, matter you? Yeah, but it ain't the American government. And whenever you well, talk we'll about that... We'll make you dollars. We'll claim Well, this $17 trillion is owed. Right. So what's left over... Right. Chances are, by the time we get it paid off in the interest, that is the American dream. I'd like to point out that you can buy propane and it ain't going to cost you a fortune. And you may need some of it over the next few months. And Digger Wilson down there in Sawmill Holler, right in the middle of the road, right down has down got some. Ellison Road goes to the right. And they got a stop sign down on Ellison Road now. You know, I wouldn't be worried about them going straight and hitting that bank. They need a stop sign on the riding her there, keep them running in the digger's place. Five six two five four 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 for all your pro That's pain five, six, needs. Five six two five four four four, folks. Fifty four forty four. Yeah. Five, oh, four, okay. Four, four, I said five four four four. It's fifty four four. Fifty. Okay, I, I had it wrong. Yeah. Now you look and you just heard from the goat entrepreneur there, a man that's. I'm a goat farmer. I bought two goats and kept them a year and a half and made twelve dollars and fifty cents off of them. You did show that I, on your income tax. I, I, I will. I bet okay. I got two hundred dollars per goat in those I've got. Well, I got more than that, man. And you counting your fines and lawyer fees, you probably got a thousand. <laughs> you, you'll get cash back. <laughs> that that that's. You know, uh, I, I'm not saying that I really could care less, but I can take you to a place in the county where there are pigs running loose yeah. on a daily basis. Well, there's miniature donkeys. I'll tell you about donkey pastry be coming down Rose Hill. <laughs> it came from this same place. There are ducks 
uh, unpinned up. Uh, uh, well, speaking of Rose Hill, I know where a place that got lawnmowers sitting all over the yard up there. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, uh, these are people all around that, uh, uh, from a health standpoint, this could be a problem, you know. Uh, but nobody says anything. My, my goats get out. They don't damage anything. They don't even get in the yard, they're in the field. Uh, they don't get in the road. Uh, but uh, then that is a hazard. You know? What about them baby chickens that terrorize oh, the community? I'm one too, is when you get little peep peeps about that size. Uh, out of terrorizing the community. Seven, seven of them gets out there in the field, they're a terror to the community. Yeah. It's yeah, just a threat. Sure. A threat but to our, our, I went by, I said, our existence. I went by the other day, and there them pigs were out in the yard. You know, I'm fairly populated area. What I'm talking about, they're uh, 100, 150 foot <laughs> lot. You <laughs> know, okay, now how deep they were, this was, must have been pretty deep because they had a, a pasture back in the back, they had all kind of animals and that. Uh, you know, it just wasn't any loose, you know, which I could care less. I was raised on a farm. I'm used to things running loose. Well, my goats, I let them run loose, and I didn't have no problem with some terrorizing the community. They terrorized me. <laughs> <laughs> my problem with goat farming, my initial idea was to get me two lawnmowers and let them mow the yard through the summer and then have one of them for Thanksgiving and the other one for Christmas. Right. Well, I fell in love with my lawnmowers and couldn't stand to eat them, so that's just a <laughs> bad investment. <laughs> yeah. That's about like we moved up here. I bought two hams that weighed 185 mm. pounds before we trimmed them up. Yeah. And uh, every time I tried to get them to fry that ham, I said, no, we ain't going to eat bigger. I finally <laughs> gave them hams away. <laughs> well, didn't you know me? Huh? Didn't you know I me? I think I was the uh, first year I moved up here. No, I don't, well, I don't yeah. think I'd I was that, in the phone book. I don't think I'd had that misfortune yet. <laughs> I was in the phone book. <laughs> oh, but uh, on the goat deal, you know, probably uh, that one, that big one of yours, probably was worth about 90 to to $100 on the sale, okay? And the little one probably was worth about 75 So he come out real good. Not as good as I did. Huh? <laughs> Not as good as I did. <laughs> Used to work with a fella, and he he dealt he messed with goats, all kinds of livestock, hunting dogs and whatever else. And he said at the sale, I don't know which one of the uh, pizza places, <laughs> but said they bought every goat that come through there. And. What was that here locally? Yeah, well, wherever our closest sale was, I believe we had one at, uh, used to have one at Clinton, but there's one up the valley somewhere. But anyhow, they said that the, uh, I don't know what company it was. I don't know whether it's Domino's, Papa John's, or which, when, whatever one it was, but said they bought every goat that came through there. And I wouldn't, he made me aware that uh, pepperoni comes made from, out, is made from goats. Yeah. And... Uh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, now, I, I it's, like it's, goat yeah. better than I do uh, lamb. Uh-huh. Well, well I, I've never had any goat meat that I know of except pepperoni, maybe, but mm -hmm. I I wouldn't. I mean, it got to be kind of like deer meat. Yeah. Well, uh, I like real young goat, you know. And yeah, you got a pedophile <laughs> here, don't yeah. we? Yeah, I'm a pedophile, you know. But, uh, yeah, they're real good. I mean, you... You can you can cook them and the meat will just fall off the bone. You know, it's mm -hmm. about like cooking spare ribs or something like that. You know. Now they, uh, if you go back before refrigeration and whatever else, the goat, whenever you slaughter one, it would be just about a good feed for a small group of people. Right. Nothing goes to waste that way. Right. But also. The milk production, I think a goat will produce about uh, two or three times as much milk per pound of food or whatever as a cow will. Yeah, they will. They'll produce... Uh, they, they use them out there in Arizona and around all them old mes mesquite bus bushes and everything yep. else. They will turn that into milk. Right. Yeah. And cardboard. It says here, those goats of mine out there a lot of time will pass up green stuff to eat. 
Uh, they love uh, 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 maple leaves. They yeah. love maple? maple leaves. Well, that's interesting. Dry ones. Of well, course. It says here that uh, pepperoni is made out of cured Does, pork and beef mashed together. Is the variety usually. Now, pick up that word apart where it says usually. <clears throat> but now... Uh, It's, it, uh, gentlemen, there's another article has to do with football. And I guess, I don't know whether you all heard about it, but do you hear the new rules now and regulations for uh, what is it whenever they induce uh, ball players to come to a place and play football? Do you hear how West, uh, West Point has started to get their uh, recruits? Well, now what they do for recruits, they uh, bring them in. They give them a wild weekend. They give them $40 cash and a police escort downtown to the right places and fix them up with the right ladies. That's Catholic school in uh, no, no, West Point. West no, it's the military. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so this is the new, I, I don't know whether they're going to make it the standard now or not, but that's how, how they're recruiting Why? their new football recruits. Well, you so, know... Uh, uh, UT uh, has to have a permanent bondsman go with all of its sports teams, you know. Uh, <laughs> if yeah. not, they won't be able to put enough uh, basketball players on the court or enough football players on the field. You have to keep them out of jail, bail yeah, them out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's amazing to me how that there's that many people who can gather in one location and from, <clears throat> I don't know whether, I know it's not all of them, but when the camera goes on to these people, uh, I don't know how to describe how they act. Uh, grown people are, paint themselves up like uh, I don't know what and the uh, I don't know. I've seen drunks that didn't act like some of them. But what can Pe you say? People, you know, I like the fact that people don't uh, aren't as stiff and as, uh, um, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, they just, people are very, very loose and at ease wherever they go, you know, somewhat. We used to be, you know, uh, you wouldn't dare go to church unless you were dressed up. Uh, you you wouldn't dare go to a uh, PTA meeting unless you were uh, presentable. And you certainly wouldn't go to court or anything unless you were presentable. You ought to go down to the courthouse now and see how these people uh, dress, you know. And uh, yeah. they could care less. People, I think, have lost all of their self-respect. I, I can kind of agree with you. I've, uh, Ronnie here, he don't have to be encumbered by commercials. Why? But whenever I see a commercial, I try to grade it as to what grade level it, it is designed to appeal to. Right, yeah. And about second or third grade is about the highest I see that they appeal to. Well, uh, sometimes they, they probably with the second grade would really get bored watching them. Well, I certainly do. Uh, if you listen to, uh, well, I seen one. This guy, he, he's fixing a sink or something. I don't know what it is. But anyhow, he has to take a pill to fix the sink because his back hurts, I reckon. But anyhow, whenever he gets done, he lays his pencil down on it and the pencil rolls off. Well, from what I saw the, of the thing, from what I could tell, the thing was level. They had to make the pencil roll off, but they had to make him look like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't, they weren't satisfied just to let him say, hey, look, he took a pill and done a good job. He had to take the pill. It was E-Leave or some sort of a painkiller. But then they couldn't leave it at that. But then the supposed wife of the lady of the house is standing there holding this little baby and then this baby laughs at him. Baby what? Laughs at him. The baby laughs, so, but it, whenever you see this thing, 
uh, it's I don't know how to describe it but anyhow <coughs> the commercials are designed to make the what I consider most white American males now I say white look like idiots now every now and then I'm starting to see some where the colored people are making other colored Whoa! people oh, African American Afri well no wait a minute now the name the word is, the word now no it's ebony people ebony oh yeah as you got to have the right word but anyhow I see where that they've got an ebony person making another ebony person look like an idiot you now, can say people of color you just can't say colored people okay people of color okay uh -huh. it's according to how you put which word you put first but anyhow yeah. commercials make everybody look like an idiot that I see and I heard one good one or uh, an analogy of a commercial and they said the louder the commercial is the cheaper the product is and that's that kind of fits most of the time well you know uh, uh, all these shows uh, used to come on I suspect they still do they say uh, William Baird had to go and watch the soap operas in the afternoon he gets uh, a chance to watch them now uh, <laughs> he got yeah, plenty of time to watch now that's one good thing I guess he appreciates that but three of those programs were written by one person it was a person that lived up in Greensboro, North Carolina. He was a little pervert that had an apartment there in Greensboro. Got an Andrews, <laughs> was he? And I forget what his name was. It was uh, Andrews, I'm he sure. He was a weirdo. Mm -hmm. And he wrote three of those shows and sent them to New York, and they changed them around a little bit. But all that uh, decision as to who was running around with who <laughs> and, and this other stuff, yeah. that was all of his imagination and uh, he lived up there uh, right right off where uh, UNC Greensboro is on I'm um, trying to think of the name of that uh, street that runs Walker Avenue I believe it is that's the one that ran right through there until they built the, the college right across the street I mean blocked the street off and he lived in an apartment up there uh -huh. he wrote all those shows that uh, William Barrett and all that bunch just eat that stuff up, you know. Well, I, I don't know. I just, to me, I, I, I get bored to death at all. I've never it. watched it. It just, uh, I don't. You uh, mean you've not watched The Perils of Pauline? No, I tell you, one I did enjoy some was the one they called Soap. Oh, that? I remember uh, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, but I never did watch it. Yeah. I tell you what I liked was uh, Dark Shadows. Yeah, yeah. What? I just watched it a time or two. But now look. These people are off the street and not hurting nobody when they're watching soap operas. <laughs> Why? But it could be worse than watching Honey Bobo, Honey Boo Boo. Is that her name, Honey Boo Boo? Uh, honey I Bobo. don't know. I, Boo Boo. Fellas, you're all out there in a different world. And I'm, uh, I, I don't even know it. it. I, I tell you, I can watch, uh, like, uh, I saw the first time I saw this year's show, Ice, Ice Road Truckers. Yeah. I thought, boys, here's something. You know, being drove, driving a truck as much as I had, I got to think, boy, I'd kind of like to drive across this ice just for the heck of it, you know. And then I seen that truck go through the ice, broke through. And then where it broke through right there was a camera yeah. under the water to take yeah. a picture of it yeah yeah and i said bs yeah. so I, how'd that idiot know I, how to be underwater it looked like he'd have, they'd have told yeah, him not to drive right know, just eat that stuff up they oh lord tell whether or not they're using real dinosaurs well, I'll well, tell you, yeah no the, i'll but, tell you what i done no I, I i used to i got my mother watched this one soap opera it come on every every day right Right after school was out, and I got, I started getting home. I was getting home in time to see the last 15 minutes of it or something, and I got to watch it, and I got interested in it because this girl had got kidnapped, and they were trying to get her back. And I watched that sucker for six months, and they still didn't have her back. And I said, I just decided, well, now listen, life is not this slow in real life, right. and I ain't, I ain't watched none well, since. What well, got me one time, I was watching one, and uh, there was a telegram uh, delivery man that was knocking on the door. Yeah. <laughs> and the show ended. 
I went back and watched it six months later, and he still hadn't got the door open and the telegram yeah, I delivered. I know it. running through their mind, well, what was in the telegram yeah. and everything. Yeah. Six months later, and he hadn't got in the door yet. You know, I remember when 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 uh, when Bobby dreamed that. Uh, I mean, uh, when when what was it? Bobby on Dallas was supposed to be killed. It turned out he was just a oh, dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm down, I'm not down at the uh, uh, Dallas. Dallas, yeah. I remember who shot J.R. Well, the, <laughs> the, well the, the fella got himself in a corner, didn't know what to do, and he finally had to say, well, this was all a dream. Yeah. You know? Well, fellas, just about everything that we see on TV is spiced for entertainment, including the news. <clears throat> they spice it up to entertain us. Yeah, we got to do one little us. serious conversation here, and that's about hospitals and riding. Well, you know, that's something that's real. You know, life and death and injury and sickness, that's something that's real. Now, so many people uh, confuse the issue. But if you're really sick, if you need uh, medical transportation, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You call Five six two nine three seven zero. That's a no burner. Or if you can't remember the number, uh, call nine one one and request vital care medical transport service. Modern equipment, well trained staff, been in business uh, probably over forty years. Does not co cost the taxpayers any money to use their service. You'll be pleased and glad that you did. If you happen to get a hold of some bad mater juice, you call 562-9370. And avoid bad mater juice. So what else, fellas? We got uh, eight minutes to sum up the world have. events. Well, locally, I keep a hearing about taxes and jobs and all this bunch of stuff. But let me, let me back up and get hit on something else. I'm sure everybody in the local area and the end of the state or whatever has heard about the amendments to the state constitution. They're and awful confusing. They are confusing. And I heard a, a, on Halloran's show this morning an explanation as to how it's done, an, an amendment to the constitution, the state constitution, and it's a very drawn out situation that... I keep asking myself on this Amendment 1, it has to do with abortion and whatever else. <clears throat> and I've read, is I've tried, I don't know how you say it, I've listened and tried to figure out whatever else. But one conclusion that I came to very early in the thing was that I didn't feel that the men should be allowed to vote on, on this situation. Uh, you don't think they have anything to do with pregnancy? Yeah, I do, but I don't think they have anything to do with the other part of it. Well, I grant the, you that if you want, if you'll keep people who well, don't own property from voting. Well, there you too. What in the world if, if you shoot, unless you're shooting blanks, uh, well, wouldn't you have some say so? It's a much your young and it is hers. And you know, yeah, you, end up ha you end up having to help raise these young ones too, whether well, they're yours or not. They, uh, the women are the one that has to carry it. And the man, the part that he does is, is mostly recreational. The, his That's involvement in it. Procreation. <laughs> Recreation. <laughs> the, uh, anyhow. Uh, Recreation. Wh why not let the ladies make the decision? the mothers it's kind of like uh <clears throat> the uh if it was the other way around what if the women were making decisions mm -hmm. about men's uh procreation or recreation wonder how the men would feel about it well it's not just that the men are making the decisions they this is this has become a political thing okay yes it has and uh, you say, well, look, uh, we don't want uh, any laws passed about uh, 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 testosterone that the women vote on. You can't, you can't do it that way. You can't se separate it or segregate it uh, 
for men and for women because you're talking about uh, how mankind uh, continues itself. And it's not just the woman's decision. If it was, then they, all them Amazons, you know, uh, would be everywhere. Uh, okay, it's not the woman's decision. If the woman does not consent, to, uh, it's, it's her decision whether to consent to having sex. Right? No, I think I've got a say in it, too. Well, well yeah, yeah. Right. okay. I've had a lot of them try to push it over on me, and I said, no, I'm just not that kind of boy. <laughs> me too. Okay. I'm saving myself. Well, what about the other way around? What about if a woman doesn't want to have sex, and she's... Well, now, we're not talking about sex. We're talking about insemination. Okay. Well, well now, what, where does... How does a woman get pregnant? Then? You don't know? Well, you, well, I know, but I'm asking a question well, here. Well, if you don't know over there... Pregnant with or without consent. Explain. Well, uh, she she can either give it up and get pregnant, or he can take it and she can get pregnant. Okay, now that's right. You now you made two, pro, two different situations. Well, but you still got one thing that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in two different settings, the end result would be the same, but the setting is different. Whether it's consensual. Well, either way, where does that get you? In the end? I mean, in the end? I'm lost now. I didn't understand that question. <laughs> but, anyhow, uh, the way I read this thing is this going to leave the decision up to the legislature. Now, right now... Well, no, there's nothing in there that uh, uh, says you can't have an abortion. Uh, well... But it turns it over to where the legislature can change that. Well, the well, legislature can uh, make rules and things in the interest of the public as far as abortions are concerned. Okay, now. See, the legislature, depending on who's elected, could go in there and say, look, everybody can have an abortion. Or they could say the other way around. Well, sure, but they don't say it. I don't that, need that, one. That, they, that the legislature could become more liberal. Right. Or it could become extremely conservative, liberal either well, one. It's supposed to yeah. reflect the population. The, the, it's supposed it's to. to. That's correct. The population. It is supposed to. But now, does, all, does the legislature or governing body always go with what? the population ask or ask of it. Now, I know it doesn't do it locally. I don't, I don't know whether there's ever been a, a sure-fired method to determine what the population wants. <laughs> That's where I guess they, what we call the election part of it. But uh, the from what I'm reading of the thing is by voting yes, we allow the legislature to be able to change the rules according uh, concerning abortion, whereas if they vote no, it stays as it is now. Because right, if nothing changes, everything remains the same. Yeah, if they vote no, <laughs> that the legislature cannot change it. Now, I, uh, I'm not familiar with all the aspects of uh Roe versus Wade. I don't know all the aspects to it, but that was passed by the uh, the uh, Congress. Now, Roe versus Wade was a decision went to the Supreme, the Court. Supreme Court, right? <clears throat> so that made it the law of the land. Then <clears throat> the states. I'm, I'm missing the link in this thing right now, but somehow through well, the state I'll tell constitution. You what. You folks just think on this and tune in again next right. week to see how it ends. <laughs> right. Right. Like a reality show. Yeah. But find out who shoots JR. <laughs> yeah, who shot or JR. RL or something. Yeah. Uh but anyhow. Are we close on time? Yeah, we got uh, ten seconds, nine eight uh, seven yeah, seconds. Go. Uh oh. Yeah, we're gone. <laughs> hey, we're gone, folks. 
Saturday, 1350 in, in LA. Yeah.